Look, I need you to cover for me again. CJ's half birthday is tomorrow and it's pretty important. What? Are you serious? Yeah, come on, man. You've slacked off your whole life. Can't I just have this? An entire fan base is talking about how Mordecai would enter a different state of mind when going after a girl. You want to talk about the deep flaw in Mordecai? Let's talk about this instead. Also, plug in my Discord. <laughs> The biggest overlooked aspect of Mordecai as a character is how affected he is to certain facts. In my Rise and Fall, I talked heavily about Season 7, and how while it wasn't that great writing-wise, it exposed us to a darker aspect of Mordecai and Rigby's dynamic. It wasn't clear before, but up to these last few seasons, it's been clear as day that Mordecai relishes in the fact that societally, he's seen as better than Rigby, even if marginally to most besides Eileen and maybe Margaret. The fact that Mordecai did graduate high school but dropped out of college doesn't look ideal to employers, but next to Rigby, he looks a lot more qualified. Even if Mordecai slacks off more than anyone else in the park aside from Rigby, because Rigby does it more, it's the person perception that creates the duo. Like with Gumball when I talked about the bros, this concept also looks good on paper, the idea of Rigby having to prove himself. Even though he kinda already did that with Muscle Man, but forget that. This setup is an all-time terrible setup, but easy to understand. Mordecai and Rigby are working, but Mordecai asks Rigby to cover for him, while he goes out and hangs with CJ. Once, twice, even three times, because that's what bros do, but the episode makes it painfully clear that at least at the second time or third time, even though knowing Mordecai, I'd say the first time, he's not picking and choosing when to use his solids, he's just taking every opportunity he can to skip work to hang out with CJ. With Rigby covering it because that's what friends do. Also, please remember that he asked Rigby to cover him the first time. Sorry I'm late. I was moving CJ's couch. Oh, I guess CJ's the remote in that relationship because she's the one with all the control. Does anyone want me to explain? Uh, no, 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 I can explain it. Ever since season one, Mordecai has forged a relationship with the audience that he is as mercenary as it gets when it comes to those whom he has a romantic relationship with and will weasel his way out of any responsibility if it meant not facing the reality that he does put women on a pedestal and acts as a subservient role in any relationship that involves women that he likes romantically. Now that he's gotten over Margaret, it's not that those habits go away, instead those habits just stick to the next girl because that's how Mordecai perceives love to work. Now to be fair, we are only seeing things purely from Mordecai's standpoint, therefore when it comes to CJ's side of things, maybe she's more flawed than we know, but since we don't see that, we can't comment on that. Maybe so far she's been perfectly reasonable, maybe she's the one who planted the idea of manipulating Rigby into covering shifts while they go hang out, I don't know. But I do know the credibility of Mordecai when it comes to relationships is at a low. Believe it or not, I don't hate It's Time or Bad Kiss, two other episodes in which we see Mordecai's perspective of love at its scummiest. Even though in It's Time, Mordecai would remove all clocks and watches and kill Rigby out of a fit of anger and jealousy due to Mordecai not pulling the trigger, this episode makes it crystal clear that you should not believe Mordecai's actions were just fair or even acceptable. I also enjoy Bad Kiss, even though in that episode, it is shown that Mordecai can't even trust himself when it comes to love, literally. As his previous self backstabs his current self just to get a good kiss from Margaret, which shows that the mercenary mindset runs deep within him. But even with that, I can enjoy the episode because it gives us a momentary gaze into his inner psyche that was both entertaining and still pretty fresh for its time. Wow, pun <laughs> not intended. But yes, even as the finale of season 3, this was still pretty fresh. Now that we're on the same page when it comes to perception and Mordecai's darker personality when it comes to love, now we can continue. It's a good thing you're here. I'm gonna need you to help Rigby change the light bulbs. Oh, I can do that myself. <laughs> yeah. Sure you can. Yeah, I can. I help all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you're expecting me to go on about how Rigby is such a great help when episodes such as Meet Your Maker, Temp Check, Diary, and More Smarter exists, you're not getting that from me. Of course Rigby is lazy. Of course Rigby is stubborn. Of course Rigby is not the smartest. I'm not annoyed at the fact that they'd even laugh at the fact that he's been helping around the house. Of course they would believe that he wasn't single-handedly doing all of the chores assigned to both Mordecai and Rigby. Rigby has been covering for Mordecai 
Kai and like a friend, he decides to keep up the illusion that both of them have been working together and not rat out Mordecai for skipping his shifts. That's on him and I completely understand that. But when your friend is being laughed at for something rooted in truth and you are the only one who can shed light on this truth, what you do in these next moments, that defines your character. So let's look at Mordecai's character. What? Come on, Mordecai, tell him how useful I am. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're fun. What? No, tell him I'm useful. Yeah, you're my friend. Why aren't you saying the word useful? So the whole time I've been covering for you and CJ? Well, I mean, it's the least you could do. The least I could... I quit. What? I can write another page about how this is completely unlikable and how Rigby isn't obligated to help Mordecai with his own relationship, and how technically Benson would side with Rigby that if Mordecai has shifts, he shouldn't drop those work shifts to go hang out with his girlfriend. Even at the end of the day, I can never call Darwin anything more than a brat. Because at the very least, his level of jealousy while annoying to watch was rooted in some kind of love. Those comments were rooted in arrogance and complacency for Mordecai. There's no other way to put it. This was a dick move. All sense of loyalty goes out the window when you hang your friend out to dry and tell them repeatedly covering for you is the least that they can do. What's the most they can do, Mordecai? Building a Margaret robot so that you can be with both women, dedicating their entire life to catering your needs even if that means setting up elaborate ruses so that you can date both Margaret and CJ, overhaul society's perspective on polygamy so that you can date both of them without societal resistance, the least you can do. Who are you to talk about the least anyone can do? Isn't this the same guy who even before he found CJ was in a deep depression over Margaret? No, 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 let me tell you what the least Rigby could have done was. The least he could have done is pat you on the back, tell you congratulations with CJ, and never accepted any solids from you when it came to her. That is your relationship. That is your life. Rigby does not have to cater to your life. No friend of Mordecai has to cater to his life. That is your relationship. And in fact, Having a friend who's just there to cater to your life simply because he isn't built for any better, that's hedonistic. I don't even blame Rigby for quitting. I'd quit too. Seriously, with all of the times that Rigby has stuck by you while you were figuring out yourself, bro to bro, I guess since I'm not calling Mordecai a man, he's definitely not a man here, he shouldn't speak to you again until there's a clear understanding of the dynamic here, of how both of you guys perceive each other. Do you have any openings for somebody who wants to rub something in his friend's face? Oh, sure. We have a variety of positions for anyone with a college diploma. I never went to college. Well, there are still some for high school graduates. I never graduated high school. Oh, well, as long as you have a driver's license. And it's a shame that we have such an awesome scene in episodes like this. You can see that despite his extremely limited skill set, he's very confident in his ability to find another job. I also just enjoy the reactions from the temporary workplace worker every time a qualification isn't met. So Rigby takes on a temporary job as a mover or lifter, and even though he doesn't have the strength to lift a singular packing peanut, he gets the job because the owner, Manny, needs as many backs as possible. Yes, backs not legs, as even though the correct way is to lift things with your legs, because the company is named Lift With Your Back, he has a brand to protect, and thus everyone gets their backs ruined in the process. It doesn't help this episode that they have to put the word back into every minute of this episode after he was introduced. This here's my moving company. I built it from the back up. Well, you only have one butt cheek, and you don't have much of a back on you, but we need as many backs as we can get for this next job. Now, I don't want to hear any more back talk out of you back blisters, or your back on the straight. You back, 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 back door. Any positives I had about the job search scene, and thus this episode, is taken back as I was taken aback by the surprisingly quick staleness of this pun. However, back to Mordecai's blissful unawareness, Rigby, clearly in pain from wear and tear to his back, collapses on his bed. Mordecai, with no shame, wants him to cover again after doing what he did to him during the initial staff meeting. He wants him to cover him again. Imagine the level of aloofness you would have to have to be surprised, taken aback from the idea of Rigby not covering you after what he did. And you want to know what it is for this time? Take a guess. Pause the video, take a guess. What could Mordecai, after what he 
did need Rigby to cover for? A half birthday for CJ. I know the point of these situations are supposed to get more and more ridiculous showing how Mordecai is taking advantage of Rigby, but why would he suspect that Rigby wouldn't go through with the idea of quitting after publicly quitting? Like we all know that Mordecai and Rigby are going to be friends at the end of this episode and in future episodes. I'm sure you're really curious on how they wrap up this episode to make sure that Rigby should be friends with Mordecai and have Mordecai apologize and acknowledge that his actions were at best wrong. I can't wait to see your reaction to it. But until then, we get a question that I'd like to preemptively answer. As you know, room and board is for employees only, and we kind of need the space for this old dot matrix printer. Why am I not getting on Benson, or Skips, or Pops, or Muscle Man, or High Five Ghosts for their treatment of Rigby? Because they should act this way. Rigby has been nothing but a slacker to them. Rigby has seemed less reliant on Mordecai in order to keep his job, at least to the perspective of them. Yes, even though they never use the dot matrix printer in this episode, showing at least to the audience that an insignificant item can take Rigby's spot easily and on the first day, they don't really care. They shouldn't care. But Benson, as the park manager, is correct that that room and board, room and board, are for employees only. And he at least shown that this is an awkward situation, and he at least acknowledges and is aware of Rigby's feelings and the connection that he has towards the park employees, if not himself. There is at least some self-awareness from him. He continues to work and mess up his back, and Eileen is always there for him. He's literally messing up his back to stick it to one person, while another person who doesn't agree that he should be there is supporting him regardless. Doesn't that sound like someone? Someone who bragged? and basically admitted that he lied to the manager, that he used his own references to get a certain raccoon a job. Someone who seems to agree that he doesn't really work at the park, but he supports his friend regardless. So let's get this over with. We have a scene of Rigby working overtime, sleeping in said lift with your backs company truck, counting down the days until payday. Unfortunately, it is company tradition to lift an entire truck's worth of heavy items in order to receive your first paycheck. However, we need some emotional manipulation before Rigby completely ruins his back. Eileen, why'd you bring that guy here? Because you guys are friends and you always support each other. That's wrong. That's actually the complete opposite of what happened. Like, you couldn't have picked two things in the universe that are more polar opposites than that. Literally, the fact that Mordecai didn't support Rigby is how they got here. You shouldn't be telling Rigby the lie that since friends support each other and Mordecai is a friend that Mordecai supports you because he hadn't, he didn't, and in future episodes, will not, based off of the predetermined perspectives of their dynamic. You think the only thing I'm useful for is being your chump? Rigby, help me get a girlfriend. Let me borrow your time machine, Rigby. Rigby, I found a dumb sweater and I gotta return it. All you do is use me, man. But I never asked you to do those things. Oh, so we're just gonna lie now. You're gonna lie to my face like that. You never asked Rigby to help you in any of those issues in your life? Roll the clip. Oh, CJ's here early. Hey, can you cover for me so we can go hang out? Sure, man. Cool. Dude, do me a solid and go out with Eileen so I can go on a date with Margaret. What? Why? Dude, come on. This is my chance to finally get with Margaret. <gasps> Wait, you mean you still have it? Oh, you mean the time machine you said was a scam and a waste of money? Well, yeah. Who sells a time machine for $15? It was on sale. So can I use it? You actually did and do ask Rigby to do a lot of things for you. And guess what? With the sweater incident and laundry woes, he was actually trying to help you not regress into the simp that you are by letting someone else handle returning the sweater. So with genuine sincerity, I hate Mordecai in this episode. How can you enjoy the character that spends a great majority of it in his own head, pushing around someone for the sake of, well, it's always been like this. Yes, Rigby has to own the fact that he's been covering shifts. Yes, Rigby has to own the fact that he has been pretty late Easy and incompetent, but when times got real and reputation and perspective were on the line, it was on Mordecai to tell everyone the truth. And the truth is, no one should hang around this version of Mordecai, beyond CJ, and in that case he's probably messed things up with her. He's a rotten character, and it would have hurt him to say, well, even though you can be lazy, you have been covering for my shifts lately. But not even that is okay with Mordecai, because then he would have to acknowledge that Rigby is useful in certain situations. Yes, Rigby lifts stuff with his back, yes he succeeds, it's a perfectly fine climax, I, I don't really care. I want to get to the apology, how do they wrap everything up? But seriously dude, I was taking you for granted, thanks for helping me all the time. 
So the conflict's been mediated? Yes, I have been taking advantage of you. Thank you for helping me. That had nothing to do with Rigby. There was no acknowledgement of his usefulness. There was no acceptance of the fact that he did hang Rigby out to dry. I'm so glad Rigby was going to have a lovely and supportive relationship with Eileen because he honestly deserves it. This entire episode is spent regressing years of friendship and boiling it down to essentially a parasitic relationship. Now, the only saving grace is that it's season 6, in which the series hasn't dived off of a cliff yet, but I can't wait to show you guys season 7. Look at this episode. This episode is perfectly fine when you compare it to season 7 because that's when things truly get terrible. I'm still working on it. It's going to be the first season review that I've done since the Infinity Train one. I hope you guys like it, but until then, consider this to be an appetizer. I cannot wait to open up those can of worms. I can't wait, but make sure to check out my regular show, Rise and Fall, and until then, special thanks to the supporters of June, and until next time, take care. Alpha out.